5th of August morning. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Upon some points a believer is absolutely sure. He knows, for instance, that God sits in the stern sheets of the vessel when it rocks most. He believes that an invisible hand is always on the world's tiller and that wherever providence may drift, Jehovah steers it. That reassuring knowledge prepares him for everything. He looks over the raging waters and sees the spirit of Jesus treading the billows, and he hears a voice saying, It is I, be not afraid. He knows, too, that God is always wise, and, knowing this, he is confident that there can be no accidents, no mistakes, that nothing can occur which ought not to arise. He can say, If I should lose all I have, it is better that I should lose than have, if God so wills. The worst calamity is the wisest and the kindest thing that could befall to me if God ordains it. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. The Christian does not merely hold this as a theory, but he knows it as a matter of fact. Everything has worked for good as yet. The poisonous drugs, mixed in fit proportions, have worked the cure. The sharp cuts of the lancet have cleansed out the proud fret flesh and facilitated the healing. Every event as yet has worked out the most divinely blessed results. And so, believing that God rules all, that he governs wisely, that he brings good out of evil, the believer's heart is assured and he is enabled calmly to meet each trial as it comes. The believer can, in the spirit of true resignation, pray, Send me what thou wilt, my God, so long as it comes from thee. Never came there an ill portion from thy table to any of thy children. Say not to my soul, from whence can God relieve my care? Remember that omnipotence has servants everywhere. His method is sublime, his heart profoundly kind. God never is before his time and never is behind. August 5th Go in this thy might, have not I sent thee. Judges chapter 6 verse 14 God never leaves his child to fail when in the path of obedience. That quotes from Theodore Kyler, C-Y-L-E-R. August 5th. The prince of the place has all... This is from Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. August 5th. The prince of the place has also sent for me with promise of entertainment if I shall come to him. Evening, August 5th. Shall your brethren go to war? And shall ye sit here? Numbers 32, verse 6. Kindred has its obligations. The Reubenites and Gadites would have been most unbrotherly if they had claimed the land which had been conquered and had left the rest of the people to fight for their portions alone. We have received much by means of the efforts and suffering of the saints in years gone by, and if we do not make some return to the Church of Christ by giving her our best energies, we are unworthy to be enrolled in her ranks. Others are combating the errors of the age manfully, 
or excavating perishing ones from amid the ruins of the fall. And if we fold our hands in idleness, we had need be warned, lest the curse of Meroz fall upon us. The master of the vineyard saith, Why stand ye here all the day idle? What is the idler's excuse? Personal service of Jesus becomes all the more the duty of all because it is cheerfully and abundantly rendered by some. The toils of devoted missionaries and fervent ministers shame us if we sit still in indolence. Shrinking from trial is the temptation of those who are at ease in Zion. They would fain escape the cross and yet wear the crown. To them the question for this evening's meditation is very applicable. If the most precious are tried in the fire, are we to escape the crucible? If the diamond must be vexed upon the wheel, are we to be made perfect without suffering? Who hath commanded the wind to cease from blowing because our bark is on the deep? Why and wherefore should we be treated better than our Lord? The firstborn felt the rod, and why not the younger brethren? It is a cowardly pride which would choose a downy pillow and a silken couch for a soldier of the cross. Wiser far is he who, being first resigned to the divine will, groweth by the energy of grace to be pleased with it, and so learns to gather lilies at the crossfoot, and, like Samson, to find honey in the lion.